Hey, what's up? This is Hunter with Tortoise and Hare Software, and today we're going to be doing an on-demand webinar for MSP search marketing. Um, so I'm going to pop over to the screen capture here, and we're going to talk a little bit more about putting together a search marketing strategy for your MSP. All right. Um, again, talking about search marketing fundamentals for managed IT service providers. Um, we'll start off by saying kind of, you know, who will benefit from this webinar. Um, so this webinar is really geared for locally focused MSPs or niche focused MSPs with at least two years in business and um, between 10 and 30 employees or one in three million in annual recurring revenue and a desire to grow to 10 million um, plus. Um, so why search marketing? Um, so search marketing is the highest volume inbound marketing channel across industries. Um, so if you look at like e-commerce and SaaS and service providers and just a range of in industries and look at their kind of traffic composition for their website, you know, as a mature business, you'll see that the, the highest volume channel is typically going to be direct, but that channel is just people coming directly to the website by typing it in the address bar or bookmarking. And that's generally going to be a um, pool of people who are already familiar with your brand and kind of a reflection of the success of the other um, marketing channels combined. Um, as far as people that are new prospects discovering your brand and driving volume of new inbound leads, you know, the next highest channel there is going to be search and it's going to be multiple orders of magnitude you know higher than the next nearest channel so you know we can kind of see in this graph here you know search is driving about 40 percent of traffic um, and the next channel behind that is referral at eight percent so you know th four times as high as the next nearest channel um, so very high volume channel um, and you know, as you move up market and start going after more sophisticated uh, businesses, larger businesses, um, you know, B2B purchasers will start to um, become more savvy and they'll engage in um, with your brand, you know, up to five to eight times before actually contacting you. You know, they're conducting independent research. They're not just asking their buddy for a uh, provider at that point and you know come and having people come in via referrals like they want to know that like they're dealing with a business that is approximately going to meet their needs before they ever even reach out so you know appearing in search results uh, you know, numerous times throughout a research process for a b2b buyer is going to be a, a great way to get those five to eight brand touches that somebody may need before they actually reach out and contact your business and qualify themselves as a lead um, and then the tech industry is just much more problem solution driven than other industries and uh, much more content driven in terms of like written content explanations, you know, uh, video walkthroughs, that sort of thing. Um, and because of that, it's just far more search uh, driven than it is uh, than other industries are. So, you know, there, if you look at uh, MSPs, and larger businesses that have gotten that 10 million uh, annual recurring revenue uh, plus, you know, you usually see them uh, be either very good at outbound marketing and have a large sales team and, you know, a robust set of teleprospectors on staff. And that's, you know, can be very difficult to manage and can be more expensive or they're very good at inbound. And if you're going to go the inbound route, um, you know, search marketing is the way to go. Um, so yeah, um, moving along here, um, one thing to kind of understand before we, you know, go further into the webinar here is the difference between head terms and long tail searches. Um, so if we look at this graph here, uh, we can see that, you know, as search volume increases, um, and like keyword specificity is low, you know, that's really going to be the head terms and that's going to be things like IT support an IT company and these are going to be ferociously competitive because everybody wants to rank for them and they drive a you know high amount of volume if you can get to those top spots for them you know on the other end of the spectrum we have the long tail searches which are going to be lower volume 
uh, more specific queries, but also much less competition. Um, those can be things like small business IT computer support services or managed IT service provider for a dental office in a particular city. Um, and kind of, you know, thinking about like the potential base of search engine queries that we could, you know, use to bring people to our website for, you know, you generally want to use pay-per-click advertising, so running ads on Google to um, bid on the head terms such as IT support or IT company because it's really hard to rank for those for SEO for a kind of a, you know, up and coming um, business that's trying to, you know, move up market. Um, and, you know, pay-per-click ad advertising is the way to go there. And then focus on attracting qualified traffic to your website via long tail search queries um, to your website. Um, and then just thinking about how to kind of really attract more of that long tail traffic and generate those five to eight brand touches that you need. Um, my best advice there is to kind of pick a niche and turtle up in it. <laughs> um, so MSPs are typically generalist companies, um, but go-to-market plans uh, really benefit from specificity when you kind of you know move up market and and cross that chasm and uh, scale your revenue volume and you know build a a more mature business. It's much easier to create repetition and familiarity within an, within an audience with focus. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to niche as an MSP. Um, you know, one of the most common that I see is by locality. So, you know, that could be a city name, a borough, a county, um, a neighborhood. Just kind of depends on what the um, characteristics of that specific locality is and, you know, what the competition level is by going one you know, versus the other. You know, for instance, in you know Manhattan, you could um, you could focus on Manhattan. You could focus on East Village. You could focus on West Village. Whereas, like you know, in Jacksonville here, there may be a couple of you know Jacksonville or St. Augustine, you know, and that's really going to be kind of your locale options. Um, you can you know niche down by technology. Uh, so there's MSPs that work specifically within the, within the Apple ecosystem. There's MSPs that work specifically within the, within the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, there's ones that work within you know G Suite only. Um, so you can you know be an MSP um, for uh, customers that use a specific technology, um, and then you can also kind of niche down by vertical. So healthcare or finance or construction. And I think this is you know actually more of an underutilized um, opportunity in the MSP space because. You know, just thinking about, you know, serving a vertical, there's a lot of value in understanding what the common software applications are in a specific vertical uh, and what the idiosyncrasies are between managing them um, and how to secure those applications, um, what potential vulnerabilities may be, you know, and that, that vertical niching is something I really rarely see. Um, I, when I do competitive research for MSPs in like a specific, um, you know, city, I generally see at most like 10% of the websites within a, a market that are actually niched down to a specific vertical. So I think there's a lot of untapped potential to uh, take advantage of that and create more pi pricing power because you have that, you know, additional value that you can provide. Um, you know, you can also niche down on like uh, price point or firmer graphics. Um, so, you know, you could serve only businesses under 10 uh, PCs, you know, kind of more of the onesie twosies market. You could, you know, serve between uh, companies between 10 and 100 PCs, or you could go, you know, up market and do more enterprise uh, managed IT um, and look to serve um, companies with a minimum 500 employees. You know, lots of different ways to niche down, um, but you know, niching down is really going to provide a lot of benefit in the uh, a search marketing context and you know just overall business. So once you kind of like you know chosen your niche, you know the next thing to do from there is to optimize your website for that niche, um, and this will really like help you catapult your growth in the near term by increasing your you know lead flow and you know making it easier to close sales because of your um, industry 
or you know segment expertise um, and then you can solve for future problems related to expansion when they arise and I've highlighted an MSP here in the Jacksonville area called DPC Technology that's done this really well um, and they're called DPC now but they originally were called Dental PC um, and they basically worked the dental PC IT support market for a long period of time and pretty much developed a stranglehold on that segment of the market um, and you know after they'd pretty much maxed out that uh, segment then they rebranded to DPC and expanded into doing managed IT support for other types of companies um, and I've kind of highlighted a landing page here where they have dentist specific targeting um, that's kind of a remnant from their um, dental PC days okay so you've kind of you know you picked your niche you've um, you're turtling up in it um, and you're you know building that competitive moat making it easier to sell things and uh, deliver services to your customers you've optimized kind of your website uh, you know for that niche your messaging um, you know how can we start attracting search engine traffic uh, you know the first thing to do is to start building out an infrastructure of pay-per-click dedicated landing pages so you know identify what those head terms are um, and um, things that are not very uh, feasible to rank for and you know that can be things like IT support or IT company and managed service provider and create pay-per-click dedicated landing pages to support those uh, queries and in your advertising campaigns um, and there's an example over here to the right you can see that this page has no like header or footer navigation um, you know the options are to either convert on this page or don't you know have strong calls to action and kind of craft a narrative to support you know that specific query um, you know also kind of create a concrete offer I see some MSPs do things like offering a free network assessment I see them offering a dark web scan you know creating kind of a specific offer um, and one that's tailored to your niche um, you know really can drive the effectiveness of those pay-per-click campaigns up um, you know, so build out that pay-per-click uh, landing page infrastructure and allocate a sustainable monthly budget to use to advertise and drive people to your website. Um, so, boom. Okay, and then, you know, the next step from there in building a you know search marketing strategy for your MSP is to start building the landing page infrastructure for you know attracting traffic via SEO or organically via Google. Um, and to do that you're going to need to build a robust infrastructure of SEO landing pages I like to kind of cite a you know statistic from HubSpot that companies with 40 or more landing pages tend to attract 12 times more leads than those with company than those companies with you know approximately five landing pages and I see a lot of MSP websites that you know they look pretty nice but they're really more close to that five uh, page website um, sort of vibe. They might have a home page, an about page, contact page, a managed IT page, maybe a VoIP page, um, and that's generally it. And that's and they're really not attracting any search engine traffic, you know, at that point. Um, you need to create individual, you know, uh, landing pages that are focused on, you know, all the services that your MSP is providing. So that's computer support, network support server support, you know, cloud services, uh, managed cybersecurity, um, you know, can talk about specific uh, public cloud providers, uh, industries served, locations that your company serves, company information, you can put out competitor comparison pages, case studies for um, companies that you've helped, um, and, you know, build out that robust infrastructure of SEO landing pages that will attract a lot of search engine traffic over time and uh, you know just kind of illustrate this point we've got a uh, this sitemap here for Manhattan Tech Tech Support which is the top ranking um, IT company in New York City and you know just looking at their sitemap they've got over 60 landing pages and 400 blog posts so that kind of just tells you what it could take to you know rank in uh, New York City and you can kind of apply that to what it might take to rank in your city or niche um, 
Okay, so you've got your infrastructure of PPC landing pages out. You've allocated a sustainable monthly ad budget to drive traffic and capture demand from those head keyword terms. You've got your landing page infrastructure built out for SEO, which is attracting um, those long tail searchers to your website. And um, you know, the next kind of step is to sweeten the pot by building a base of backlinks. Um, and the first thing you want to do there, if you haven't done already, is to optimize your Google business profile. Um, you know, this is really the important, most important kind of directory because Google's the most important search engine here in the U.S. Um, so you definitely want to have your Google business profile up. Make sure you're using keywords in your company description, that your company, or your company is categorized correctly, um, you know, things like that. And then um, push out your... Um, websites information um, to other business directories uh, to build what's known as citations and um, basically you know Google's gonna look at all these other business directories you know like yellowpages.com, Yelp, Hotfrog, Google Business is a technically a business directory, Apple Maps you know all these different kind of like directory um, listing uh, type websites and look for a matching name, address, and phone number to the one that's on your website. And then that just helps build a uh, level of trust within search engines that your business is in fact located at that spot, is a real business, and um, you know should rank for those local queries. Um, so you know there's a number of services that you can use to push out those di directory citations and build those name, address, um, phone number references. You know the next step there is to kind of issue a press release. Um, you know there's a you can use a press release distribution service um, and craft a you know press release that kind of tells people about your company and who you're trying to help um, and use those press release distribution services to push that press release out to you know what can be hundreds of websites. Um, and all those websites will include a backlink that points back to your website. Um, you know, and then also make sure that you have social profiles and create two-way links between your site and the profile. Um, you know, a lot of people know that there's links from the social profile, like you know, on LinkedIn, for instance, you can put a link back to your website on your LinkedIn page. But you can also kind of tell search engines via some code on your website that that LinkedIn profile is the same organization or same entity as the one that your website is representing. So that kind of builds that two-way relationship and helps you know, strengthen your um, backlink profile and send better signals to Google. Um, now just be aware that this kind of base of backlinks, um, you know, these tactics are available to everybody. So they don't provide any you know, relative advantage to people who have already done them. You know, that said, most MSPs are not, you know, familiar with this stuff. So in my, in my experience, although these are kind of like table stakes type tactics in hyper competitive markets, you know, this can kind of get you to the middle of a pack or get you a good solid like trickle of traffic via, you know, backlink authority that can help spur your organic link growth. Um, you know, as your site starts to rank, you know, higher and attract more um, traffic, you know, other directories will scrape um, the existing directories and you'll start to, you know, build more citations organically. Uh, you know, those press releases will get redistributed back to, you know, to other sites other than the ones that they were um, picked up on originally and that will, get, you know, give you some organic backlinks. And then, um, you know, just, uh, this is like a good way to kind of kickstart your uh, journey and your backlink profile. Um, okay, so, you know, I'll just pause here for a second and say that, um, you know, doing these things up until this point um, is a, you know, good way to, you know, get started. Like these, um, you know, like if you follow, if you create, the, create these landing pages and you do your little kind of backlink uh, initial campaign to build citations and you've niched down appropriately, you know, you should be seeing a yield, a substantial increase in qualified traffic and market visibility come from this. Um, and you need to measure your performance and kind of double down on what's working. 
And you can do that at a basic level with tools like um, Google Search Console and Google Analytics um, and kind of seeing you know where the traffic growth is coming from and looking through looking for opportunities there um, and you know also understand like where that's resulting in organic leads so make sure to configure your conversion tracking um, to get an understanding of when people are submitting contact forms when they're calling into the business when they're subscribing to your newsletter or taking other valuable conversion actions on your website um, I highly recommend using a third-party call tracking tool to measure phone calls um, because most MSPs are using an IVR and um, you know calls are a very important way for them to you know communicate with new business um, you know a lot of like out of the box these analytics platforms are really only going to be able to capture like phone call button click events um, but these third-party call tracking tools will allow you to route through a call forwarding number that can capture a conversion and attribute it to a specific channel so you know this can really help you get a better understanding of what sort of um, you know pages that are attracting s organic traffic and what you know what the ROI of SEO is you know these call call tracking tools are you know relatively cheap per month and they can give you a lot more visibility into conversions generated by channel so highly recommend um, adding a call conversion tracking tool like call rail on top of um, the free tools like Google Search Console and Google Analytics um, yeah okay so you know again these are following these steps are really like can bring you up to the middle of the pack um, relative to other SEO or other MSPs in in your local market um, that said um, you know if you want to get more advanced with SEO and you want to go you know kind of past that 10 million mark or you know really like get uh, you know double down on SEO you can do some more advanced things um, but you know just building that robust uh, infrastructure of SEO landing pages building those pay-per-click landing pages allocating a sustainable monthly ad budget and you know kind of working those angles are enough to take you a long way and put you ahead of a lot of other MSPs because a lot of M other MSPs just aren't doing that stuff um, so just be aware of that because a lot of SEOs are gonna you know tell you to go straight into blogging um, or tell you that you need to start link building immediately and in my experience that's bad advice because you shouldn't you know bear the expense of kind of tackling those problems until you need to and you know check these uh, boxes of building this you know a robust set of service description landing pages and pay-per-click landing pages and mastering that paid traffic acquisition you know before you go into a more long-term and more expensive um, you know uh, play in the blogging realm and like more you know like kind of long-term SEO um, some of the, those more advanced SEO tactic tactics are doing things like competitive analysis you know understanding what your competitors content looks like um, what their messaging is what their content structure is where there's p possible gaps in the um, market that people aren't focusing on that you know is bringing in um, leads and where you could double down on content in a specific area you know for instance you know there might be lack of competition in people um, creating content for people searching for backup and disaster recovery services so you know that can be part of your managed IT service offering so you might want to double down on creating content around backup and disaster recovery and build a moat there um, so that's what kind of competitive analysis can do um, you know the next step can be like you know on page optimization you can use a tool like SEMrush and that will analyze your web page and determine what you can do to make it rank higher from an on-page optimization standpoint for a specific keyword. It'll tell you what other competitors in the market are doing that are ranking for that keyword in terms of like word count, content readability, whether they're using video, um, backlinks you may need to earn to kind of get parity. Um, you know a number of different you know on-page factors that you can um, 
change uh, to help your content rank higher and maximize you know the things that you've done within your control on site to make that make your uh, um, pages have a higher chance of ranking for those top spots um, next thing you can do is do uh, what's called keyword position tracking and this is basically where you track your uh, keyword positions or rankings within a kind of specific you know geography Google Search Console, for instance, is going to give you uh, data that's you know globally uh, focused. So you know if you look in your your Search Console for like an IT support keyword, it might show that you're ranking in position 20. What's really most likely happening is if you search from North Dakota, um, and you might be ranking 20. But if you search from Jacksonville, you might be ranking position one. So those keyword position tracking tools will use a virtual agent, you know, they'll spin up a virtual machine and they'll conduct a search from a specific location. Because all searches are contextualized to the individual searcher. So to get accurate position tracking data for like a local city, um, you really need to use a position tracking tool that's going to use those virtual searching agents to get you better data on how you're performing for local searches. Um, you know, then you can incorporate blogging. Um, so blogging is hard to do right, and there's a long payback period, and I see it done wrong far more often than I see it done right in the MSP space. Um, but I can tell you that you're not going to get to top of market without it. Um, you know, blogs are the best way to build more organic backlinks, and then once you get um, backlinks to a blog you link back from your blog to your like money pages your service description pages and that's how you rank them higher so these companies that are you know creating these like very valuable long form blog content posts you know they're trying to attract backlinks and get people to those pages and then funnel that like authority down to their you know money pages so you know might build something it's like the ultimate guide to IT support and then link you know over to your IT support you know service description pages to help it rank higher um, and then um, but you know blogging is again hard to do right there's a long payback period you got to be very patient um, and you know think carefully about whether you want to even make that undertaking because again you can go a long way in an SEO sense um, and without blogging and a lot of times when people start blogging that money would have been better spent just you know on digital advertising in terms of generating an ROI um, and then you know you can do proactive link building um, this usually requires manual outreach and typically involves working with a PR firm to get link placements on websites like Forbes or the Wall Street Journal um, you know things like that and it's very expensive so it's generally not applicable to MSPs in that one to three million ARR range this is you know definitely more for high volume um, businesses um, smaller MSPs are gonna be much better off doing um, organic uh, con link building by just posting on social media um, and you know hoping that their friends link to their content so all right, so if you are a small MSP, kind of how can you approach this? Um, I like to put this in ways that MSPs may understand, and that's uh, Atomic Habits. So Atomic Habits is a business book that's popular. It seems to be more popular in the MSP space than in other industries. Um, and one of the, you know, kind of key principles of the book is to, you know, focus on the process and the trajectory of where you're at, and not the, necessarily the current results because small regular contributions compound into big results over time. So in that sense, you know, I recommend kind of creating one landing page per month and one blog post per month if you want to do blogging and you know, allocating that sustainable monthly ad budget you can for search ads and then just trusting the process over time because it does work and it will help you attract more search engine traffic and generate more inbound leads over time. Um, but you know SEO tends to kind of start off as a slow trickle and then you know uh, ramp up kind of exponentially after reaching a tipping point so you know you can't obsess over the um, 
you know, where you're at, just worry about the trajectory and trust the process. Um, so, you know, I like to say, how do you build a $10 million business? One month at a time. Um, so, you know, focus on those atomic habits, just keep, you know, keep working the system and, you know, the results will get there. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of the atomic habits. Um, so what does this look like when executed? Um, so we've been helping a you know local MSP here in the Jacksonville area execute a similar sort of content production schedule um, and help them out with the digital advertising aspects. And you know they've doubled in size over a two-year period and they're still growing. Uh, they've got a 750% increase in organic traffic flow per month, and they've gone from about you know, roughly zero to one percent, you know, bottom of the market in terms of search engine visibility, uh, market share to around nine percent. So they're in the upper middle, uh, you know, bracket in terms of market share in the Jacksonville area now. Um, and at the top of market, there's, you know, a lot of large national competitors that are um, difficult to unseat. So they're really close to the top of market in terms of Jacksonville focused MSPs. Um, and they get a stable flow of five to ten leads per month via search marketing. Um, so that's great. Um, and let's look at a couple, you know, websites here to, um, you know, show you what this looks like. So this is that uh, company in Jacksonville, and I'll just kind of poke around through their navigation here for a second. You know, you can see they've got about us page, a legal IT page, manufacturing IT, healthcare IT, nonprofit IT. Um, managed IT, data backups, cybersecurity, cloud, Azure focused page, one for Windows refreshes, um, IT support, Office 365 support, computers, servers, networks, and you know each of these pages is optimized for you know Jacksonville specific uh, messaging. So you know B2B Office 365 support in Jacksonville, Florida. So that's aimed to capture low or long tail queries. Um, for people searching for uh, you know that type of or a similar query so business to business purchasers in Jacksonville looking for office 365 related um, you know stuff same thing here IT support within Jacksonville Florida you know we've got messaging um, that uses Jacksonville IT support and you know similar messaging to help um, help attract those long tail queries. Uh, we've also built up a solid base of blog posts. Uh, we promote these on social media and you know these help drive that organic traffic, uh, build those organic backlinks and increase the domain's you know propensity to rank over time. Um, also you know we've got these kind of pay-per-click dedicated landing pages for you know specific queries that are those head terms that we talked about in the beginning of the webinar so these are the high volume high competition words that are almost infeasible to rank for out the gate via SEO but they are valuable and you need to be advertising for them on you know search engine with search engine ads and um, you know this page right here is dedicated specifically to IT company related searches in Jacksonville um, so it resonates very strongly with people who've you know searched and clicked on an ad there and then has a narrative crafted behind you know that per particular type of searcher um, so started working with kind of net tech uh, right around here um, and this is kind of their domain overview um, so you can kind of see the growth you know at this point they were getting about 45 hits per month um, and then now they're at about 370 hits per month. So, you know, this was summer 2019 and they've grown, you know, pretty substantially since then. And you can kind of see how the base of keywords has increased and um, ones in the top three and four are uh, starting to increase now as well. So, you know, the future is very bright and it will only continue to get better. Um, as we continue to kind of execute and you know work the system and and do those atomic habits Also want to kind of you know point out this other um, company called logically um, So net Tech's about a 30 person MSP um, Logically is about a 250 person um, Plus MSP so much much larger MSP 
and you can kind of see that they've done you know basically the similar sort of stuff lots of landing pages lots of different ways to attract search engine traffic and um, you know they've reached a very high level of operational maturity in terms of a you know digital marketing sense um, so they've got things you know segmented out by service you know if you click on these service pages there's nested um, landing pages that are not directly accessible from the navigation um, so for instance on this compliance page here you can click in and they've got a dedicated one for HIPAA compliance so you know that's attracting HIPAA compliance um, related queries in an SEO sense um, but you know they've got things segmented out by technology by the type of IT project you might want to run industry verticals um, the the role of the potential purchaser they've got company information um, you know and then a ton of buyer enablement materials so lots of information on how to choose um, on whether to work with with an MSP um, you know what an MSP does uh, and then they have you know numerous resources on their blog they've got case studies they've got assessments you can request like that free network assessment or free dark web scan that we talked earlier they've got white papers ebooks infographics quizzes videos webinars whole nine yards so you know they've they've really like executed and built that you know very robust set of landing pages that helps them attract a lot of search engine traffic and you can see that in the numbers here um, so this company is attracting about 7,000 hits per month so that's a you know very high volume of uh, traffic and uh, you know just kind of you know starts to match and they've got around 900 referring domains here so you know you can people like to make it really complicated but and it can get complicated you know executing this stuff but in a lot of other ways it's also really simple you create more content you um, create more landing pages and you send more traffic to the site and that results in more prospects finding your site which results in more leads which results in more sales and that's how you grow um, you know definitely are a lot of subtleties and intricacies you know along the way but it's really you know there's definitely a correlation between there's more content um, on the site and that brings more traffic which brings more leads which brings more sales um, so yeah um, okay so we're at the end of our webinar here you know I really kind of scratched the surface on you know tactical execution um, sort of stuff in this webinar um, and really give you kind of the 10,000 foot view but you know building out the infrastructure of landing pages and allocating an ad budget and you know giving people the opportunity to find your MSP that are searching for it you know is uh, something that search marketing is a very good fit to help facilitate so hope you learned something in this webinar um, if you have any questions uh, feel free to reach out uh, you can let us know in the comments below or I'll post my you know LinkedIn um, in the in the video description and you know you can reach out or you can find us on the web at tortoise and hair software um, hopefully you found some actionable insights that you can take back and implement in your MSP um, so again hope you like the webinar thanks for watching I'm Hunter Nelson with tortoise and hair software and until next time